The second race of the season for the North American Grip All Challenge Series is here in Colombia for the Coralist 150. This is gonna be a shorter race than usual, a 150 lap race across this half mile speedway. This race used to be 250 laps, but in recent years we had a lot of caution fest and a lot of trouble, so the organizers decided to cut the race in 100 laps, and so only 75 miles, 150 circuits around this very short track. As you see, the last car to make it into the field on pre-qualifying was Ronnie Samples with a 21.552, and you see the amount of heavy hitters that did not qualify. You can see Peter Johnson, Kate Taylor, and Maga McDonald, teammates at the Ernest Lewis Look Star Conundrum, Bobby Savage in the 51, Alexis Women in the S2008, Gripper Stevenson, David Lamar also did not have a very good time in qualifying. So this was a very, very uh, good, very, very quick session. As you see, two locals, Dixie Robinson and Danielle Shepard also failed to qualify. And Steve Gard Jr. also does not make it into the field. But let's stop talking about the ones that didn't make it. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Because Samples was the last car to make it in. But he takes the second position in the starting lineup. Kelly Ashcroft takes the pole. Rebecca Pellerin and Thomas Tucker start second and third. Very good result for the two drivers. Alongside Kelly Ashcroft that finished in the top four last year. Kelly Ashcroft won the title. Rebecca Pellerin finished second. Thomas Tucker finished fourth. And then you have Cornelia Brooks and Stan Gustafsson with two very good efforts bringing up row number three. And starting in seventh place, you have Joy Torks in eighth place, Boyd Abbott. And then you have Kirk Jones in a very good uh, ninth place. Jamal Schmidt brings up row number five. And then Riley McKee and Mac Henley bring the rear of row number six. With the field set, let's go trackside for the race. Kelly Ashcroft leading the field to the green and she gets the green and she's already on business as Rebecca Pellerin lagged a bit. Here comes Ronnie Samples on the outside. He had a good start, Rebecca Pellerin lagged and you have Thomas Tucker, Ronnie Samples and Rebecca Pellerin fighting for the position as Kelly Ashcroft already clears the field. But Pellerin's already making a move to catch up and she is already on Ashcroft's heels. And by the time we reach lap number two, entering the back straightaway, Rebecca Pellerin already goes through and takes the lead. Pellerin had a fantastic season last year, won four races, did not win the title because just whenever she wasn't winning, she was crashing or blowing up and that just ended her shot. In the rear of the field, Blake Chen, oh, into the back of Jennifer Irving. Irving takes a swipe back at him. This is gonna end Jennifer Irving's race quite unceremoniously and... That was just stupid, let's be honest. Chill a little bit, chill a little bit, Blake. Rebecca Pellerin finding herself in second place now that Thomas Tucker makes a move on her at the start of lap number 4. By lap number 15, he's already gone. He already clears the field, but one person that is not having a good time is Caitlin Richler, 28th place, 15 laps in. She won last week, shouldn't be running this badly, but HQ Racing just seems to have missed the setup. Someone that did not miss the setup was Murata. Hibiki Murata running in 13th place right now. Very good run. As you have the first casualty of the race that is not due to a crash. Kip Lemon in the 200 blows up. And he's done for the day on lap number 16. Lap number 18. Stan Gustafsson making a move on Rebecca Pellerin. Takes second place. Gustafsson a road racer. Showing that he does have some oval prowess. And here he comes. By the time we reach lap number 21. Here he comes for the lead and there goes Stan Gustafsson for the first position. The Swede is showing his muscle early and showing the muscle off those BMWs really early. As Nelson Racing is one of the bona fide contenders for the title this year with their full-time driver Lucy Martin. Adam Patterson running in 28th place, 24 laps in as Caitlin Richler blows up. Caitlin Richler blows up in 27th, her day comes to a screeching halt, right as she was about to be lapped by Stan Gustafsson, the caution comes out on lap number 25 as she just blew up and there's a couple of, the, there's quite a bit of debris on the inside of turn number 1, by lap number 30 it's a quick caution, Stan Gustafsson leads the field to the green, and you see Ryan Faulkner there appearing in the, in the mix, but he is actually a lap down, pay attention to that, he is not running in 4th place, 4th place is Joey Torkson, 5th place is Ronnie Samples, Rebecca Pellerin just makes a move on Thomas Tucker to recover the 2nd position, Gustafsson continues to lead and leads it very strongly. 
As Thomas Tucker hanging on a third. Ryan Faulkner trying to recover his lap. They make contact. Calm down, boys. Calm down. We can get this through. We're still 35 laps in. There's time. Kelly Ashcroft dropping to the field really hard. Not having a good time. She gets tagged by Rebecca Murata. Hits the wall very, very hard. And it's a caution. It's a caution. The defending champion will not finish the second race of the season. She already had a hard time last week. This one doesn't help. Ryan Faulkner, of course, lapped. He stays out. But Stan Gustafsson brings the field to the pits. But coming out, he had a lot of difficulty in the pits. The car stalled together with Joy Torkson. He's going to end up in 24th place with Joy Torkson in 23rd. This is a disaster for the Nelson Racing Team. The car stalled when they were coming out. And because this pit road is so long, a few uh, guys and gals got stuck in the rear of the field. So Rebecca Pellerin leads with Thomas Tucker, Corbin Dempsey, uh, Charlie Faulkner and Ronnie Samples bringing the rear of the lead lap car. So we only have five cars on the lead lap and everyone else is about to be lapped or already lapped. Uh, actually about to be lapped because let's be honest, if everyone's in front of the leader, then no one's a lap down. They're just about to be lapped. And as you can see, Rebecca Pellerin already doing a very good management of this situation. By lap number 46, she has already gone through a couple of people like Boyd Abbott and Kirk Jones. As Charlie Faulkner now finds himself in second place, having a very good run. Charlie Faulkner, uh, he was a regular in the North American Auto Club, but never contested the minimum amount of races to be considered a rookie. I'll talk about that right after this. Because Boyd Abbott, oh, you can see the very, very premium view of this battle Boyd Abbott's having as here comes Charlie Faulkner on the inside to take the lead. But he has a lot of lap cards in front of him like Jamal Schmidt. Rebecca Pellerin stuck on the outside. Here comes Thomas Tucker for the third position as Charlie Faulkner now has managed through Rebecca Pellerin. But now Thomas Tucker is going to try to manage through him to take the lead. You look at the bird's eye view. You see the amount of damage on Riley McKee. We don't know what happened, but they had to take off the entire front end of the car. The entire front panel is gone as... Thomas Tucker just manages through Charlie Faulkner and as I was saying Charlie Faulkner he has wins in the PCC he has a win in the PCC Cup Series he actually drove in the PCC Cup Series before coming to NAC in NAC he actually never did the minimum amount of races to be considered uh, a rookie to be a rookie you need to contest uh, at least four races but he only contested three in most of the seasons he ran as Thomas as Kirk Jones got unceremoniously dumped by Leash Man and he has a lot of damage now but he does give way for Thomas Tucker as Brett Finley into the back of Jack pa and Adam Patterson Patterson sends Brett Finley spinning caution is out but here comes Lucy Harper and the rest of the field trouble and Ryan Faulkner sends Thomas Tucker spinning Kirk Jones everybody is involved the track is blocked Ryan Faulkner sends the leader around, and this is everybody, and oh my god, Jamal Schmidt. Ryan Faulkner sends Thomas Tucker spinning, you have an accordion effect, Stan Gustafson, Joy Torkson, Mac Henley, Emily Potvin, and then Jamal Schmidt gets propped up on top of Charlie Faulkner's 85 automobile. There you see Corbin Dempsey, Rebecca Peller, and Ronald Samples, and Riley McKee barely going through. Here comes Andrew Atwood, but this is a big mess, and now Jamal Schmidt stuck on top of the 85. They're gonna take him off there, they're gonna be able to drive it away. But let's go on the onboard camera of Joy Torkson, just nothing he could have done. Stan Gustafsson had no way to avoid it. Joy Torkson couldn't avoid Stan Gustafsson. And this is a disaster for quite a few people. You'll see the bird's eye view as you see the field devolving. I don't know what, uh, what Ryan Faulkner thought there. I think he thought he had enough space. But this is actually going to help him recover his lap. So... Um, I'm not one to think of conspiracy theories. But I'd rather think he just had a brain fade there. Rebecca Pellerin finds herself in the pits. Corbin Dempsey with a lot of damage. He's going to be done for the afternoon. Charlie Faulkner also done from for the afternoon. They were third and fourth. This is going to throw a monkey wrench into the race because now Car Connie Brooks recovers her lap, finds herself in the lead, and since everyone pitted, no one's going to have to pit anymore. 
Connie Brooks is gonna lead the field to the green, and Connie Brooks is now your new leader uh, with Blake Chandler running in second place, Lucy Barton running third. They were in the rear of the field, but they were able to go around the track and recover their laps. They were able to wave around, and this is the new battle for the lead as we are under 70 laps to go. Connie Brooks, Ryan Faulkner are sorting themselves out. Adam Patterson has a lot of damage, but his car is still around. For what's worth, for whatever that's worth, Blake Chandler through the to the lead on lap number 84, and this is gonna be very important. Chandler finished four, finished third last week. If he wins today, he takes the championship lead, and he's having a very good run. Lucy Barton around the outside of Boyd Abbott, trying to sort the situation out with the lapped car, and she looks like she might be able to. Abbott's not having a lot of strength. Either Barton goes through Abbott or Abbott goes through Chandler and seems like the latter happened as Abbott goes through He is now on the tail end of the lead lap and Lucy Barton uses this opportunity to get on the lead And you see third place now is Ruby Carson Thomas Tucker now is a lap down Jamal Schmidt You can see the amount of damage in the 55 just did not have a good time at all But he is still running not a lot of people can say that anymore Thomas Tucker is a lap down, but he is still running within the top 10. Luke Pellerin is running in 7th right now. Not the best run because he is with a bit of damage in the rear end, but he is in the lead lap. He is in the top 10. You have to take whatever you can get. Lucy Martin now is stuck between the 14, the 43, and incoming is the 91 and the 03. And Lucy Martin just cannot manage because she needs Lee Schmidt to make a move. So that then she can make a move on the 14. There's not a lot of space going on. But Abbott forces a three wide. Here comes Lee Schmidt. And here comes Blake Chandler. Takes the lead on Lucy Martin as we are approaching 40 laps to go. And Blake Chandler now has cleared Lucy Martin. Leads away. And oh, oh, bills of smoke on the old three. There's a cloud of smoke in the old three. Blake, oh, no. Oh, no, what a tough break. Blake Chandler finished third last week, just got the lead, was one of the best cars on track right now, and with only 40 laps to go, his car gives way. But the disgrace of others is the grace of few, as Ryan Faulkner now finds himself in the second position. Ruby Carson is now back in third. And Emily Potvin, a couple of laps later, she was in 7th place and she blows up. Her race is done. Stan Gustafsson, Boyd Abbott and Lucy Barton go through. Lee Schmidt goes through. And she is going to be able to take that car back, back behind that concrete wall you see on the right side of your screen. But tough break for another driver that was having a good run. But in the meantime, by the time we reach lap number 127, Lucy Barton has took off. And she's gone. There's a big, big gap between her and second place, Ryan Faulkner. Faulkner carrying the flag of his team. Thomas Tucker was leading the race until he got spun out and had that amount of damage added to him. But he's still in 8th place. Again, gotta take what you can get. But someone who is not just taking what she can get is Lucy Barton with only 5 laps to go, leading away. Just a dominant performance. Caution is out. And this will effectively... And the race under yellow, we will not have enough time to finish the race as we enter lap number 147. Let's take a look at what happens as we have a three wide. That will not work. Look, Pellerin has to give as Lee Schmidt and Hibiki Murata get together. And this is going to end the race under caution as I already said. Rounding out the final corner at a blazing speed of 55 miles per hour is going to be Lucy Barton, her first win of the year. Ryan Falker is going to take second place, Ruby Carson takes third, a very good result for her, she survived and takes the top 10. Connie Brooks is fourth place after leading the field on the restart, she just did not have the car to be up there, but she had a car to be the last car on the lead lap. But Abbott's going to take fifth place after surviving through everything that was thrown into him, Brett Finley closes the day in sixth place. Thomas Tucker, 7th, Luke Pellerin, despite spinning out, still finishes in 8th place, 1 lap down, top 10, but hey, it's a top 10. Mac Henley, the car was demolished, he was driving a modified by the time we reached the end of the race, no front end at all, but still, 9th place, a very good uh, 
survival work by him and Rebecca Pellerin after everything that happened to her a top 10 is way below what she needed the championship standings now see Lucy Barton leading the championship over Pellerin one point divides them Mac Henley with that top 10 finds himself in third place eight points with Connie Brooks with that fourth place she's also eight points behind Barton a very good start of the season for the S2 motorsports team Ruby Carson is 5th with that 3rd place, Thomas Tucker is still in 6th, 16 points behind, Ryan Faulkner with his 2nd uh, place will jump all the way to 7th, but he is in a part-time schedule. Blake Chandler could have left uh, Columbia with the championship lead, but he will have to settle for an 8th place, 18 points behind, just a ridiculously, ridiculously tough break for him. The Flying Swedes, Stan Gustafsson, also a part-timer in 9th place, and Caitlin Richler finishes last. Closes the top 10 in the championship hunt. Rookie of the Year Power Rankers. Power Rankings see Ryan Faulkner leading away with Blake Chandler right behind him. Boyd Abbott trailing behind with a big gap uh, between him and Chandler. And an even bigger gap between him and Faulkner. Andrew Atwood, Peter Johnson. Uh, Peter Johnson did not qualify. Andrew Atwood finished uh, around the back. Hibiki Murata finished around the back. Charlie Faulkner did not finish. Jennifer Irving finished last. And Kip Lemon brings the rear of the Rookie of the Year Power Rankings, 17.89 uh, behind an index. The next race for the North American Auto Club Grip All Challenge Series will be the first road course race of the season, the FWK Challenge at Lime Rock Park. I will see you next time.